So what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to show you me sewing um, hair, which is made out of string in my case, onto the hair strip. I've got uh, markers either side for where I want it to, to turn round. So this is the male hair, so I've got one and a half inches this side and three and a half inches this side. And what I'm doing is I'm just popping it underneath the foot. It's focusing on my hands instead of the... Um, the thread and I've got thread under my tripod so excuse me a moment <laughs> learning curve for everybody here oh it's still stuck hang on a moment okay um, so I'm turning it round at this it doesn't have to be exact depends how neat you want to be I'm looking for a shaggy hairdo look really so I'm just sliding it underneath the foot not lifting the foot or forcing the foot in any way I'm just um, sliding it under about three or four and then just making sure the strip is not gone off askew and then it focuses on my hands doesn't it um then i'm going to sew along see if i can get it to zoom at all sew along that little strip of if you have a look now you see the needle is there let's move the needle so you can identify it there's the needle look um it's down because my machine does down as default at the moment and you can see the sort of four lots of string in front so what I'm going to do now is sew over those um, I've got uh, two I'm on 2.2 and um, I can't get my camera to stand straight so it's seasick camera angles there um, except you can't see it can you sort of see it. If I put my finger here, will it focus on it? I don't want it to focus on my hands. Um, I mean, really, I'm just sewing. But what I'm doing is making sure that it, or trying to make sure that it goes through every piece of string. I'm going to go back over this later, so it doesn't matter if it doesn't quite catch every one. Um, I've got a ball of string here. Um, Let's go again so you can see how this this now can you see how this is now not quite central so as I put the next lot of string in I'm going to center that strip back up uh, <laughs> this is a, a tripod from the pound shop for a different phone this is how it is isn't it it's not talking about make do and make do and make do really so there's a few more in I'm not worried about the knots because I quite like this to be a, a sort of a tatty do um, but if you could use um, wool without knots if you wanted to have a sort of tidier affair okay so I'm going to pull this back so that it's it's all sitting nicely it's quicker when I'm not trying to video it and talk to you um, there so that's how it's that's how it's set up but I do need two hands to sew it because if I don't and I bet you won't do it now if I don't use two hands to sew it um, Actually, that's not too bad. But what tends to happen is that the string tends to um, open up. And you can see the fabric underneath. It doesn't sit next door to each other if you don't use the two hands. This um, <laughs> tripod is getting wonkier and wonkier. I don't really understand why. Not my skill, the videoing bit. Right. So let's do some more. Um and you get the gist. It's not difficult, it just takes a bit of time. So I'm making sure that on the left hand side here, that the where it turns round, where it does the return, is up against this tape, which is at the three and a half, and the same on the other side. So put your hand over the lens on her. Same on the other side. Um, and for the male hair, we've got a sort of a fringy area and a <laughs> I'm not tripod over, and a back area. So, what I really need is some video editing software because I'm saying all the right things and showing you all the right stuff, but there's a load of other stuff going on in between. Hey, so lining it up, it's about four times, and then I just keep it so that it doesn't shift while I sew it. And I think that's probably enough until I've finished, isn't it? Really. So let's um, let's pause this, and I'll show you what it looks like when I've finished. Okay, so now I'm close to the end. I'm just leaving a little bit on the end. So I've cut these about half an inch longer than I need. 
Um, and what I've done is I've sent the last piece, it's still attached to the ball of string at the moment, but I'm sending the last piece to the back of the head for the male. So his fringe is all loopy and um, the back of his head's going to have the last um, chop. I might chop the loops at the back, we'll have a look in a minute. So that's that's kind of the end and um, what I will do, see if I can do this without... Okay, so um, what I would do now is I've got my um, needle just in the fabric, just beyond the string, and I'm going to turn it round. I've given up on the tripod. I'm using one hand to do stuff and one hand to hold the camera now. Um, so there, if we look quite closely, you can see that the stitches are sort of small enough to catch most of the most of the string. I mean, it depends what kind of wool you're using, etc., wouldn't it? But look, they're about the right size. And you can see that in most cases they have gone through the middle of the string. However, the string is in um, two strands um, and it may not have caught everything. So what I'm going to do now, I've just literally just turned it round. Focus. Turned it round and I'm going to sew back up the length making sure it stays flattish and then I might even go a third time just to make sure it's all really secured. So I'm going to pause the video while I do that and then you can take a look at the end. That's... And here I am at the end, I've gone back and forth, back and forth, um, focus. You can see in there there's actually three, if you look really carefully, there's three lines of stitching. It only looks like two, doesn't it? I can guarantee you it's three. And then at the end here, I'm just going to back stitch. Don't focus on my hands. Thank you. Um, so I'm right at the edge of the fabric here. I'm going to just make sure I'm in the fabric and then back stitch. That must be awful to watch. There we go, just to secure it. And I didn't show you the start, but I did exactly the same thing as the start, just backstitched over um, where I started. So I'm going to take it out of the machine now and um, show you what it looks like on the head of the doll, how it fits on the doll. Now this is going to be interesting because she's currently wearing a dress. Not that men can't wear a dress and girls can't have boyish haircuts. You can do what you like as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, here we go. Uh, that's very close in now, isn't it? Can I, can I zoom out? This is, it's dreadful having you watch, watch all my experimentation on the videoing. Let's move the machine a bit further away and have a look at, so here's the doll's head. Light's not great, is it? Here's the doll's head and here is the string of hair look. So it's a short bit at the front and a longer bit at the back. And for the guy, what I was doing was attaching it along the um, in the seam of the doll's head there. I was basically putting the hair along that seam that way round. And he has a kind of funky um, sitting up in the air kind of hairdo at the front. And if I turn it round, you can see it's kind of long enough. Um, doesn't do anything special at the back. And I think what I did um, is trimmed it at the back so it wasn't loopy. Um, I would sew it on first. So if you look at the middle of his head, oh, this is too close, isn't it? Um, if you look at the middle, this is the middle of his head down to the back, then that length is about right. Obviously at the sides, it's much, much longer. So what I will do once I've sewn the strip to his head is give him a haircut round the back so that all the loopy ends are gone. Um, and it's just straight hair at the back. But, I mean, you can style it how you like. I'd quite like the kind of funky loopiness at the front. Um, and depending on exactly where you put that strip, that that is now just a little bit in front of um, the seam on the head, which gives more of a a sort of fringe affair. Um, I mean, hairstyling's up to you, isn't it? <laughs> but this is what I did. So what I'm going to do now is I'm I'm not I'm going to pin it onto his head, not sew it, because I want to do the girl, and I've only got one doll. At the moment so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pin this to his head 
and uh, give it a chop and show you what it looks like. Okay. So it's now pinned where I would have sewn it and I'll talk to you a bit about the sewing maybe in a minute. Um, and now I'm going, just going to give it a haircut, which you don't catch the doll. These scissors are probably not sharp enough that it would catch the doll as I cut it. But really I'm just giving it a haircut. Because, you know, in lockdown we've all been practising our haircuts on our people around us, haven't we? So we all should be really good at haircutting now. I have to say, ours have been um, shaved. It's been a shaved head scenario here. Although I've not touched mine at all. It's so long, it's really hot and bothersome now. It looks great when it's, you know, done for five minutes. But um, anyway, I digress. So here now, he's got shorter hair. That last little bit. There's a bit there that needs to... I, I'm doing this with a phone in between you and I, so it's... um. A little bit trickier than it, it will be for you. Um, there we go. And really, you can do what you like with it. I and mean, it's not massively thick, but actually, I mean, I haven't lay, I didn't layer it up. You could do another layer of hair on top if you wanted to. But I've found with this string that I'm using anyway um, that um, it's quite, it's quite big. It's quite thick enough, just as it is. Um, it's got a bit of a bald bit there, but there you know, it's a guy. <laughs> I don't know what's happened there. I think one of the fringe bits got caught around the duack. So that's, you know, basically what we're doing on what I've been doing with the hair. And then round the front, let me show you the front. It hasn't got a face yet. It's kind of, it's loopy. And um, I know, I quite like that loopy, loopy look. But I mean, there's nothing to stop you trimming that to um, a different shape if you'd like it to be in a different shape as well maybe trim bits here you know maybe he doesn't want it so loopy uh, around his ears but if you look on um on my web page the photographs of the little men dolls that are there that's exactly how i did their hair um i just spent a little bit longer tidying it up in terms of sewing it onto the head um i've pinned it which is probably a good idea if you look under under his hairline here um, you can see a bit of fabric there. It's got a bit of something caught there, hasn't it? Well, that was the bit that gave made him baldy, wasn't it? it? Ended up around the wrong side somehow. Uh, send that round to the back. Okay, so you can just see the fabric. Can you? No, because the doll's just not the... there. You can see the the fabric and what I would do to sew it on is literally sew as close to the stitching as you can through that fabric slip stitch it onto the head so into the head out through the fabric into the head out through the fabric into the head out through the fabric all the way around um, I think I did it on both sides both in front of that seam and then round the back you've got the same thing on his head here at the back, obviously. Um, just sew it to the head because the hair covers it up. So just think about what colour you want this strip to be. You might want it to be the same colour as the hair. You might want it to be the same colour as the doll. I chose the same colour as the doll. That was my feeling was the right thing to do. And actually, you can see on this one, um, it's not the same colour as the doll. But you can't see it. I, mean, I haven't sewn it on yet. But, um, you know, you can't. You can't see that fabric there through that through the hair. I mean, it's yellow. Only you can only see it if you go and go and look look for it. There we go. So that's what I would do. And then the next thing I'm going to do is show you how I do the girl's hair, which is pretty much the same from a sewing point of view, but the distance of the string either side of the center band, the fabric band is different and the length of the fabric band is different. So I'm just going to sew that without trying to video it um, because it's exactly the same really um, and then show you how I style the girl's hair so let's um, pause this and see what happens actually what I am going to do is just show you how how I started off because last time I, I started videoing part way through so what I've got here is the girl's hair strip 
I've got the piece of string which is about a quarter of an inch away from the end of the strip and I've put my foot on top of it. My needle is going to go down just through it and um, I've made these longer because the girl's hair is slightly different and then I'm going to line up about two or three sections. It's up to you whether you have the loops on the inside of your measurement or the outside of your measurement. If you want to cut the loops off and give her straight ended hair you need it, the loop to be a bit longer than your measurement. If you wanted to have loopy hair then you know a bit shorter. So I'm actually going to do it slightly longer oh, you can't see that can you so I've just done it right to the edge of the tape the three and a half that I'm looking at is this is this side of the tape and I'm just going to take it just to the other side of the tape to make it a little bit longer so that I can cut the loops off later um, do the same on the other side so you can see I've started with the end of the string on this side. It doesn't matter so much for the girl because she's the same back and front but I think of this as the back, back of the hair and this is the front of the hair um, and so I've just put a couple under at the moment. So what have I got? Three under there and then I'm just going to do a little bit of forward and back to get it started. So a few forward, a few back and forward again. So now I'm just going to carry on completely as before and I'll catch up with you when I've done it. So here's the doll with the male hairstyle and remember we did um, a strip which is sitting on his head across this way, basically through the, the seam of the doll's head and the front was shorter than the back so the strip, let me show you when I take it off, the strip is, look at the side with the fabric on, um, uneven. So there's more hair this side than that side. And I've given you some measurements. There'll be some measurements on a document to accompany this. Hopefully later on today. So the girl's hair. This is the girl's hair. <laughs> One handed I'm doing this. Um, so she has even amount of hair both sides of the strip. And instead of putting it along the seam of the doll's head here. I'm going to run it from front to back so that she has a centre parting and again I'm just going to pin it but here she is look with her hair and her centre parting how far forward you put it is up to you however far forward you'd like again I'm just going to pin it pinning it through the seam I'll show you the back in a second um, so what I designed for the girl was for her to have um, bunches. I suppose if you didn't want her to have bunches, you could make her much like the male hair and put plaits in or whatever it is you wanted to do. So this is the front of her hair. So she has more of a, I think that's a bit more girly than the curly, the curly fringe, short fringe of the other one. Um, if we have a look round the back, we can see actually my strips very long no it isn't there this just goes you need to make sure this doesn't go beyond the base of her neck <laughs> been in there. Um, that just needs to be in the nape of her neck so I might need to just bring this forward a little bit more so move it out so yeah pin it before you sew it okay so you can see now that the the stitching can you see the stitching is down the middle there and she's got some hair to the left and some hair to the right and that was literally me thinking of being on stage because I, I did left and right back to front forget when you video it it's the same well this is working the same way around as I am but if I was teaching you and you were looking at me from the stage I'd I had to have done that the other way around so you can see where my expertise is and it's not in videoing right so um the next thing I thought I would do is tie her hair there and also, I'm not quite sure what this bit's doing, where this bit belongs, it's got caught up somewhere, let's call it that side. And also here, tie, tie them up like that, which 
gives you head coverage, keeps the hair covering the head, and when you turn her round, sorry, it doesn't work very well, does it? Um, gives her a little bit of a there, gives her some bunches. Maybe I'll tie that up and show you again so you can see her bunches. Okay, so here she is. Here's a, here's the back, and it's been pulled into her little bunches at the sides, and you can see that it covers her head quite nicely if you're careful as you um, pull the bunches in. I think the fact that I haven't actually sewn it on made it a little bit more difficult for me, but there we go. And this is what she looks like um, round the front. So she's got centre parting. I got the angle right. She looks such like a very fat face at the moment, and here's her little bunches so you could make those longer if you wanted to um, they're, they're loopy still I quite like that little loopy look it looks like a proper child with a tatty hair to me <laughs> I always had tatty hair when I was a kid I don't think it's much different now but you can you can neaten that up as you wish you can cut the cut the loops give her a trim so it's all nice and um, straight I do it after you've sewn it so you can see here here's the strip and just like before you sew the strip to the head before you put attach all the bunches and everything. Um, sew the strip to the head, and um, this end here. What I would do when I was sewing it would be to tuck it underneath like that, sew it down rather than chop it off. If you chop it off, you're always looking at fraying edges and bits sticking out that shouldn't be. So I tuck it under like that when I sew and sew it down. Um, there you go. So hopefully, despite the fact that it's not that tidy and that I'm not very good at videoing, etc, etc, you would be able to, from that, with a document with some measurements and instructions on, be able to make the doll's hair. Hopefully. Um, the smaller dolls are come out at about 75% of um, size of the big dolls. So I'm going to use that as a working hypothesis and then at some point... I'll make a smaller doll and absolutely check that the smaller ones do work to those um, dimensions. So that's the hair. Hopefully that's helped you work out how I do the hair. Um, I've got faces to do. I've got um, trouser and shirt to do. Um, and, and pants. I'm still working on a really good way for the pants. I've got a pattern for the pants which is on the website. Um, and... It works. I did my first ones with like a um, shearing elastic, one row shearing elastic around the waist. I've also suggested you do a turnover and put very thin um, elastic in the waistband. Um, I'm looking at uh, doing some with stretch because if you do, if you make it out stretch, the edges won't fray and you don't have to put the seam allowances on and they literally just stretch on and off. Um, but I'm a bit short of stretch to show you that just at the moment so I'm hoping to do that to double check that that theory works uh what else well you let me know if there's anything else that um the um, instructions and patterns and the current sort of video attempts are, are not covering that you need help with okay I think that's it for now thanks for watching